It's time to get those custom rear fenders done on my 1939 Hudson big boy rat truck build. Coming right up. Hey, how's it jokes? My name is Duff and I welcome you back to my one man shop out here in the forest. So in my previous video, <coughs> excuse me, I asked your opinion on the design of the rear fenders. Here's a flashback. So here in the back, I'm playing with the idea to let it come out some past the, what it would have been the tailgate. Um, now that's either ridiculous or quite cool. I can't quite, quite make up my mind yet. So I'm still messing with it. I don't know what to do. Please help me. Shall we have it sticking out? So thanks for everyone's feedback. Obviously there were different opinions and that's exactly how it should be. I mean different strokes for different folks and all of that. The world would be a very boring place otherwise. <laughs> so a, a bunch of you guys like the idea of the fender sticking out past the tailgate. Sort of letting it hang out. <laughs> There were a few other suggestions as well and then a lot of you oaks uh, suggested that I turn those fenders around have, have them sitting the other way well I tried that in a previous video and the looks of it just didn't work for me here's a flashback so then I thought let me turn them around so I'll fit the one from that side on this side something like that So I like the fact that it's stopping much shorter here, but now I'm not sure that that curve in relation to what's happening with the front fender is working for me either. So yeah, I'm not convinced that this is the right thing to do. I mean, I can modify this cutout and fill in that piece down there and all of that, but no, I'm not convinced. Okay, let's consider some other options then and the only one I can really think of would be to stop it in line with this post or in fact even behind that post so approximately at that point and that would then mean that this curve will be something like this No, that's going to look horrible, man. I mean, we're losing this whole beautiful back shape of the Hudson fender. What we're doing here, we, we've shortened it, but we still got that suggestion and it's flowing. No, I don't like that at all. That looks really crap. <laughs> so let's delete this option, definitely. And we play with that pointy, wingy idea. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take this thing off and mess around with it some. If all else fails, I've always got those beetle fenders to fall back onto. <laughs>
This piece of rusty steel is perfect for what I want. So I'm just going to cut out a rough shape here. So I'm going to try and bend it a little bit over this piece of pipe because I want to match that curve right there. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Let's see. <laughs> Too much. Pretty close. A little bit more here. Yeah. I think we can make it work. So I'm just clamping on these straight edges to help me line it up. And I'm working my way along. I started at one end. So if you do work your way from one end, you got to make sure that you got a bit of a gap there because as you stack it, it will close up the seam and then you might actually have to cut it open a little bit but so far we're looking good So you probably can't see it, my seam, but my seam is starting to close up here. So if I do another tack, it will actually pull that plate in and it will overlap. So I'm just going to cut it a little bit here to give it some clearance. Right, that ought to do it. Let's clamp the straight edge on again. That feels good. Here we go. Not bad, all things considered. 
I mean, if you're welding, you will get distortion. So here in the curvy part, it's pretty damn good. And then you can see as we move towards the flat section, you're starting to see a little gap there. It's not much. I mean, it's a millimeter, 40 thou. If you're a Bondo guy, it's no problem. <laughs> I'm not a Bondo guy. <laughs> if you want it better, a little bit of planishing. I might even still do that. See that hammer and dolly business works. Now it's too good for a rat rod. <laughs> I built my planishing hammer from scratch in a previous video. It's time to put my little bam bam to work. <laughs> It's not perfect, but um, I've got a good excuse. We are working with rusty and pitted metal. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, if you wanted to do a show car kind of job, you're going to leave less than, I don't know, 10 thou of filling. Of course, we're not going to fill and fair and bono and all that stuff. It's going to let it rust. And rust is of course the great equalizer. <laughs> so yeah, just comparing it to the original sister, which is the one in the bottom. Well, actually that bottom one is not original. Somebody has changed it. The 1939 Hudson rear fender actually came like this. And then they moved backwards. So at some stage in its life, somebody must have decided to change it and make that straight line. So I added this piece and I added in this. And then of course we moved this line in by making a pie cut right there. Now I still have to do this other one and make it the same as much as I can <laughs> as this one. But before I give that sister some love, Let's just first see where we're going to be going here on this side. So what I've done here is I've added some temporary supports just to give me a departure point. I made up these supports that are bolted onto the side panel. Um, I will be removing them and then I can just weld up those holes. So the truck is fully slammed at the moment. This one here. It's only about 10 millimeters thick or 3 eighths of an inch. But um, I don't need more than that because the wheel can't move up anymore. Right, so let's get this fender in place. Something like that. I can clamp it onto my supports now. 
and I can mess with it and move it around a little bit. I've been moving this freaking thing around forever now, this way, that way, looking at it from all angles. I think it was Radrod Bob who said, you can mess with something until you're happy, or you can mess with it until you're sick of it. <laughs> I think in this case it's a bit of both. Uh, that's the best I can come up with, I think. So I've left it oversized here, and the arch here, all oversized. I can still cut that down. We'll see as we go. So now I need to start thinking about a way to attach this thing to the side panel in a more permanent manner. Because currently it's just kind of clamped on and hanging there. <laughs> Balanced. So what to do next? So I think I'm going to use these pieces of round bar and weld them in every 6 inches or so 150 more to create a kind of a framework and once that's done I can remove my temporary supports Here we go like this. So I've used 8mm 516 round bar because that's what I had on my shelf. Um, six small quarter inch would be just as good. So let me remove my uh, temporary support here because now it should stay very well where it needs to be. <laughs> yes man. I'll just weld up these holes at some stage. So we got a nice sturdy framework here now. All we got to do is fill in the blanks. So let's just test it with this piece of scrap here. To see that we've got a fair curve. Now that's looking great. You see that it's touching on each bar. So that means we've got a sweet line and a fair curve. If there was a gap at one of the bars, something was wrong. So this is looking very good. I'm happy. <laughs> so let's see what it looks like here in the back. That's touching. There is a space. This one is not touching. We're touching there again. So that means this one needs to lift up a little bit. It's not much. Oh, maybe two millimeters. But I might just give it a bit of a whack with the hammer and move it up a little bit. Look here, you'll see what I mean. I can actually slide this piece of hardboard in between the, the cardboard rather, in between the piece of sheet metal and the round bar. So it's not a lot, but if I press it down, maybe you can see it there, then the curve's not sweet and fair anymore. But apart from that little challenge, the good news for me <laughs> is that it's warmed up enough today that I could ditch my sweater. So spring might be on its way here in the southern hemisphere. I'm really happy about that. It's awesome. I mean I've had enough of the cold. I'm sure my uh, buddies in uh, Australia will feel the same way. You guys in uh, America and in Europe, I don't know, I mean your fall or autumn as we say must be on the way and I'm not sure that you're too happy about uh, getting another winter. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be a fat fender, eh? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just a rat rod, so a little bit of ridiculousness is cool by me. So I spent some time to make up cardboard templates here, to establish patterns and just to see how it's going to look. Now I didn't take you with on that process. I mean, it's pretty boring. Um, I know some channels like to be live and you have to watch grinding and all sorts of boring stuff. I don't know about you, but I kind of lose interest when it goes like that. So I'm going to do this in two pieces. It's just going to be so much easier. I mean, doing it in one piece is going to be quite a mission. So I'm first going to cut out the back piece, get that in place. And then we'll do the front piece. So we'll have a joint right here. So let's go and cut this piece out of steel. 
I'll take this off and then once that's done we can come and try it for size so the fancy guys will never use a rusty old piece of steel like this but in my world it's perfectly acceptable in fact it's preferable <laughs> Now that's what you call value for money. <laughs> okay, let's see. So these things typically don't fit perfectly the first time around, especially if you've got a bit of an intricate shape. That hardboard or cardboard template, it's got a little bit of give. So you just got to fine tune it a little bit and take off here and there to get it to fit nicely. But it's looking pretty good. I might have to take off in one or two spots just a little bit to get it nice and flush. Well, I reckon that's as good as it's gonna get. So I'm gonna start tacking this plate into place. Right, so this one is on. I've tacked it every inch and a half. Um, really starting to stiffen up now. Still a bit floppy down here. So I might probably install a brace here. Although I still intend to cap this with a piece of round bar once I've decided on my final shape. And that's going to help to stiffen it up as well. Uh, sorry about this thing. I had to go for a blood test that's part of the regular old, regular old medical checkup I don't need that anymore ouch now I can do the front section so I've got this rough template that I'm just going to refine a little bit and then we can go and cut it out I just need to clean up and establish this line right here and that butt line I cut this front piece according to my template and I'm just busy manipulating it into place. So I've got some clamps here with pieces of metal to just hold it down. Up here I've got some wooden blocks and a wedge to help me hold it in place. And then I tacked on this piece of flat bar so I can just force this corner down so that we can get that curve and I can tack it on. Whatever it takes, eh? <laughs> so a simple push stick like this works really well for holding down pieces of plate when you want to attack them just a piece of round bar with a pipe to make a t-handle and then you can push down you can even put your body weight against it to get more pressure and then you can put that tack in place they work really well
So I still need to do something in here and fill in this area. So I'm just basically making up a cardboard template for the piece that I need to go in here. So something to that effect. So I guess I could just go and cut this piece out of some sheet metal and then stick it in here and weld it along here. But I'm going to have quite a hard corner here. And I don't think I like that. I really would like it to have a bit of a soft edge. And a bit of a curve here. So I'm just thinking how to achieve that. You know, it's a challenging little business because we've got a curve this way. But we also got a bit of a curve going this way. So you can actually see that in this template. <clears throat> this line here is not straight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it out very roughly. Maybe, yeah, even down there. And then fold an approximate line down here. Stick it in the shrinker and see what we can come up with. Just look at my bending brake. I've just wiped it down with a damp cloth. Just for you. <laughs> so instead of folding a sharp edge on that piece of material, I have quickly made up this, uh, what shall we call it? An edge softener. <laughs> It's just uh, basically a piece of 10 millimeter round bar, 3 8 with these tabs welded on. And I'm going to bolt it onto the edge of my beam or whatever we call this top contraption. So the bolts will go in here. And then the plan is to fold my sheet metal around that. And then I will get a bit of a radius bend. So let's see how that's going to work out. So I thought some of you might find this quite interesting. You can see that this edge of my round bar jig is sticking out past the edge of the top beam. But I've made the hole in the top of this bracket here adjustable. So this can move fore and aft. And then in the back I've got this bolt here that can act as an adjustable stop. So I can move this backwards and set up my stop so that I can have this lined up here with that bottom edge. So when I fold the plate comes around nicely. I can make sure that the thickness of the plate is allowed for. Okay, so let me get my rusty piece of sheet metal in here, line up the marks approximately somewhere there, tighten down on my clamps, same so this side, and let's give it a shot. There we go, let's see what the radius looks like. Yes. So I've got it in the shrinker now. And I really would have liked more of a radius. But from previous experience, if I increase this radius, then uh, the shrinker doesn't take it through to this surface, if that makes any sense. Because now with the shrinker, I'm going to make this curve into it. Um, yes, and like I said, if the radius is much larger than that, it seems to just shrink it here and it's too stiff to transfer the curve into this part of the plate. So um, yeah, let's give it a go. See how it's going to turn out. Oh man, I see these screws are busy undoing themselves. 
That's why I started struggling. It's not the best drinker on the market, I guess, <laughs> but it works for me. This machine is actually a shrinker stretcher in one. So I've got the shrinking die in here and this down here, that's the stretcher. I've just got it living nowadays. If you want to turn it into a stretcher, you take this one out and you fit that one in there. I got this from uh, Ardendorf's, which is the South African version of Harbor Freight, I suppose. Uh, not expensive, but works well enough. Um, so yeah, I'm sure if anybody in South Africa is interested in a shrinker stretcher, this one does the job. But I did modify it some. So this one is sold as a bench mounted model. And then you have a lever here that you work it with. Now yeah, that didn't work for me. I wanted to have, be able to have both my hands on a workpiece. So I mounted it on a stand and I added a foot lever or a foot pedal. So now I can work it with the foot and have both my hands free for holding my workpiece. Works very well, I'm very happy with that. If anybody's interested in more info and maybe dimensions on how I built my contraption, you're welcome to let me know in the comments and I'll make a small video about it. Now this is all tightened up again. So I'm just going to shape my piece a little bit more and then we can go and test fit it to see where we're at. Okay, I think I should go try it first. Okay, let's see what we've got. Get this in here. Something approximately like that. Yeah, we're kind of okay up to about here. And then we definitely need to move in some more. So back to the shrinker we go. Try it one more time. Now it's getting better. Now it's good until about this point roughly. Yeah. And back to the shrinker again. Which is why I've got my shrinker on a portable stand. So now I can put it here right next to the truck and I don't have to walk around so much. <laughs> I wonder if that's enough. If I overdo it, I must put in the stretcher. So let's go try it first. Again. A few more trips between the shrinker and the fender. And that's what my piece looks like now. Let's go and clamp it on. It fits nicely. And I'm thinking that this curve should actually be a straight line. So once I've got it welded on there, I can maybe push this in to make it straight. And then weld that on. Hmm. And now I've decided to do some thinking. And for me, that's always a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> I mean, first price really would be if this flat were to transition into a round, same as what we've got on this side, instead of the flat connecting to another flat with just a bit of a radius there. But man oh man, that's a different story. And then I got thinking about an English wheel, which I haven't got, and a sandbag, which I haven't got, and a nice nylon tucking hammer that I haven't got. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I should pull these tools first, Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> no man, I'm going to have to draw a line somewhere. No man, Duffy. This is good enough. I mean, like Bob says, after all, it's just a rat rod. <laughs> Let's just weld it on.
Okay, dokie, so that's what we have so far. So I do have a very good reason for my progress being so slow. Come here. <laughs> I've got a beautiful new shop assistant. Yes. Hello. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm sorry for uh, stealing your favorite YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> this is my lovely daughter Shana. She's visiting me from the Netherlands where she's currently residing. Yes. What's the name of that city in, in English where you live? I live in The Hague. The Hague. International City of Justice. Now oh, there you go. I yeah. don't know how much justice there is internationally, but anyway, how do you say the Hague in, 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 in Dutch? Den Haag. Den Haag. I've got some Dutch viewers. Den Haag. <laughs> yes. You can hello say for the Dutch, for the Hollanders. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So no, um, I haven't sure. seen Shana in yes in a long time. How long since you've been here? Two years. Two years it's I haven't seen her. Two years, yes. So we've been hanging out quite a bit, doing all sorts of other stuff and um, having yes. long, serious discussions. We solved yeah. all the problems in the world. True. <laughs> or we tried to. <laughs> yeah, and many there are. So. Yeah, many there are. Um, so I'm very happy that she's visiting. My yes. Daughter. Yeah. But we're not only solving world problems. <laughs> Shana is also helping me to solve truck problems. Sure. So we are busy removing this white paint because underneath I've discovered the original blue paint. It is very nice. It's going to create a nice patina. So she's just helping me to remove that white paint. Yep. Right. Um, yeah, you can see I've just added some, wiped it with some world linseed oil and you can see that original, what, 80 plus year old blue paint popping out. Obviously there's a lot of rust as well, but that's what we like, isn't it? That's why we build rat rods. Awesome. So I'm busy fitting this rocker panel that I made in a previous video. This side I've already trimmed it so that it intersects nicely there with the fender. And this side I've still got to cut a piece off, so that I've got the same gap as up there. This is uh, bolted underneath there, in there. <laughs> I'll show you just now. I undid the bolts that come through from the inside through these holes. And then down here, I've got a nut welded on from that side. Because to get to that nut, a bit of an issue. If I had one of those Rivna tools, but I don't. Christmas wish list. So there I'm going to turn this and you can just there, if you look carefully see the nut on the inside that I tack welded on. It was a bit of a mission to get in here, but we got it done. So I would like to have a flange here as well. So I'm just going to Cut out a piece of metal here from a scrap piece. Where is my marker pen now? Found it. So I can just mark it here and we can cut it out. Okay, like I meant, so thanks to Shana, we've got all that white paint removed. My fender is kind of together. I've got my little rocker panel fitted, for lack of a better word. I still got to make a final decision about my wheel arts and this cutout here. But I think before I worry about that, I'm going to worry about repeating this whole business on the other side. 
Ta-da! <laughs> and I've got the one here on the starboard side done as well. Yeah, the right hand side. Um, is it exactly the same as the one on the other side? No, definitely not. That would be very difficult. But does it matter? No, it doesn't, because as long as it's sort of the same, it's impossible to view both fenders in the side view at the same time. So if there's a difference, say this distance is a little bit different to the one on the other side, it wouldn't matter. The important thing though is that they at least look the same when you view it from the back. And to help me with that, I clamped on this straight edge here, parallel to my back bumper and parallel to the frame. So that could help me now to uh, make sure that my stick out is the same in, on, the, on both sides. And also that the point at which this uh, stick out ends is the same on both sides. So in that really low shot, I think they look the same enough. <laughs> Of course, yeah, the curse is that when you build these things yourself, you know every single discrepancies. And yeah, I know them. But uh, you know what? Most people would have to look at it for a very long time to see any difference. And I'm sure the majority of folks won't see anything. So I'm happy. This is good enough. <laughs> That's the eye level view from a standing position. And I see my uh, one little daylight is busy falling out there. <laughs> I just stuck it in temporarily to get a feel for things. Hey, and no bonus points for noticing any differences here, hey? And this hole here where the original filler cap was, that doesn't count. So I was looking at my fender and then my eye got distracted by something. <laughs> So I just want to show you this here. Look at that approach angle. That's not too bad, eh? <laughs> so I still got to make my final call on this fender arch cut out. I might even play with a skirt, a removable skirt down the line. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> I think before I make that final decision, I would like to get my running boards in place. I think that will be giving us a much better aesthetic overview. So um, I think that's my story for this week. This has been a lot of work, <laughs> but it's done. Thanks for uh, hanging out here in the shop with me. I enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, have a lucky one. <laughs>